Shalom Aleichem wa Assalamu Alaikum Peace and blessing to all people in the name of He who is independent of all our struggles, independent of all of our imperfections. He who will lead us all to His way of truth and peace for all those who desire so. May it be all of our desire. Anyway, <laughs> uh, it has been put forward to me by a number of people that uh, one of the advantages that uh, one of the things superior about Islam over that of other religions is that Islam was the religion of of all of the prophets from Adam to Noah to Abraham of Hino to Abraham and his sons Isaac and Jacob Moses and the righteous of the people of Israel etc including Jesus they say that their religion was Islam, they were Muslims. While the Christians claimed that they were all Christians and the Jews claimed that they were all Jews. Well, I don't know about Christians, even though when I was a Christian I didn't think this. <laughs> but as a Jew, and my talking with many Jews over the past seven or so years, it's not the opinion of Jews that all of these people were Jews at least not in the way that we mean it, but were they all Muslims in the way that you mean it? When they say that they were Muslims, they will say that their religion was that of submission, surrender to the will of the one absolute authority, the creator of the universe. But if this is the intention of their saying that they were Muslims and Islam was their religion, well then in that case, I am also a Muslim, and I was Muslim even before I became Jewish, I was also a Muslim when I was a Christian. Because in all of these stages, I surrendered intentionally, my intention was to surrender and submit my will to the will of the Creator, to know His ways and His desires, and this continues to be my will. And any error that I may have in my thinking and in my doing, may He reveal it to me, and correct me in His compassion, and lead me on the right way. This is the will of all who strive to serve the Creator. This was not an organized religion. You can call it Islam because that's what it means in the Arabic language, to surrender to the Creator. But this does not mean that their religion was the same exact in all its ways as the Islam and organized religion of today. In fact, the Qur'an itself specifies this. No, I'm not going to bash the, Islam, the, the, the Islamic religion by saying this. The Qur'an itself testifies that the people of Israel, for example, were given commandments by Allah which were different from the commandments that the Muslims of Muhammad's day were to follow. It doesn't just say that they kept different commandments. It says that Allah commanded them with regard to things which are forbidden for the uh, Muslims who followed Muhammad to keep. Uh, among those were certain things with regard to food that the Qur'an says records Allah as having commanded the people of Israel as a, re as a uh, result of punishment, that these commands were actually punishment to the Israelites. Well, regardless of what the reason was, the case is that this was the commandment at that time to the Israelites. And part of their repentance and surrender to the Creator at that time, part of their being Muslim at that time, would be surrender to the Creator's commandments, even if that command was given to them as a result of some deed they had done previously in the past. The same may be true with something contained in the Qur'an. The same may be true with all sorts of things that, that uh, we aren't even aware of. The Qur'an says over and over again that it is not giving the full story. There are opinions among the Jewish sages that certain things that we ourselves do, despite what the Qur'an says, and apart from what the Qur'an said about uh, certain laws regarding food, Certain major, majorly respected Jewish sages have stated that certain things that they themselves did and that they believe we are obligated to do as the people of Israel, that this is not truly an ideal of an ideal, but rather was given as a result of the continual state of the human nature, such as uh, the need to bow when praying. Clearly, prayer is, uh, how do you say, enriched with modes of prostration and, and, uh, and 
washings of the hands and face and feet. These things reinforce in us a sense that we are about to do and are preparing for a great meeting, meeting with one who is worthy of all the greatest respect and honor. But were our psychology different, it may be that different actions would be needed in order to prepare us for contact with the creator of the universe. Likewise with sacrifices and the entire system in the temple, the Almighty obviously does not need our sacrifices. But because it is the tendency of mankind that he has the mind frame that, that only this type of uh, worship, this sort of codification of worship will lead him to repentance. So this is what the Almighty commanded. It does not mean that we shouldn't keep these commandments. It does not mean that we should abandon the commandment. It is simply acknowledgement of our state and that this commandment, even if it's a result of some negative thing about ourselves, that this commandment is part of the rectification of that negative trait, of that negative reality. Um, getting back on topic. So, while on the one hand, many Muslims will tell us that they are superior, that their religion is superior because all of the prophets were Muslims. Well, I have no opposition against being such a Muslim. But, as I've just stated, that does not necessarily equate to the form of Islam that is standardized across the world today, as the Quran itself testifies. In addition to that, will you deny that all of the prophets were acknowledgers, proclaimers, and worshippers of the one authority over creation to whom nothing compares, who transcends time and space? Will you deny this? Well, that's what the word Yehudi means. The word translated as Jew, Yehuda, Yehudi, means one who acknowledges and worships from the word Hod, the one who transcends all of our conceptions, he who is the same and unchanging. Yo, Yehudo, Yehudi, Yehudi, the Yod at the end simply makes it that this individual to whom this term is applied is identifying with that concept, just as uh, we would say in Hebrew, Muslimi, adding the Yod, the E sound at the end. Um, so, no, I would not say, as maybe some Muslims would say with regard to the earlier prophets, they might think that they were exactly as Muslims today, I don't know. But don't be uh, deceived and don't promote false conceptions. I, for one, and none of those whom I respect among the Jewish people, none of the great rabbis who I've learned from would even begin to say that all of the prophets were Jews in the sense that they were obligated and all of the commandments given to Moses. But heaven forbid that we should deny that they were Yehudim, that they were proclaimers, acknowledgers, and worshippers of He who is incomparable to any of our most lofty thoughts. May he who reigns in his heights and reigns in the depths of the earth and in all the innermost hidden places and thoughts of our minds reign over all of us in this world with his peace and bring us to greater knowledge of him and greater understanding of each other.